Hey friends! Hey everyone! Good day to all of you. So, welcome again to our special vlog. Welcome to Side Talks, kung saan ito'y usapang pangkalawag kaalaman. And for today's episode, let us talk about how can the church engage with the society? Pag-usapan muna natin, how can the church engage in the government? So according to Pastor Percy, in Sambuanga City, palagi nilang pinag-pray yung mga leaders and workers, even yung mga government employees, before their flag ceremony in the city hall. So maganda na pinapakita natin sa kanila, pinapaginig natin sa kanila yung mga panalangin natin, not just on our closets. Yung mga panalangin kasi natin, it is a form of malasakit sa kanila. So, kung nakikita nila na may malasakit tayo, even though they are, they are just outside our church, kahit hindi sila members ng church natin, ma-appreciate nila yun. And also, mas lalo natin mapapakita na may malasakit tayo sa mga tao outside our church. If papahintulutan lang sana ng mga leaders, yung mga members ng church o di kaya yung mga church leaders mismo yung tatakbo sa mga LGUs or sa government. Alimbawa, si na Sen. Manny Pacquiao, si na Sen. Joel Villanueva, si na uh, si Bak Partilis Representative Br- Brother Eddie Villanueva. Sila, mga Christian leaders dito. Naniniwala ako na kapag may mga Christian leaders na nasa government, sila yung tagapamagitan natin. Sila yung nakakakita ng gray area sa mga batas na yun. If that law na tinatry nilang ipasa, is that a law that is morally upright? Is that law is morally giving glory to our Lord? Halimbawa, may mga certain na batas na hanggang ngayon hindi pinapasa kasi nilalaban ito ng mga Christian leaders na ito. Hindi, not just Christian leaders, but also some religious leaders na ayaw sa mga batas na ito. So, nakikita nila yung gray area, not just the black and white, but also the gray area na masyado questionable yung batas na ito. Naniniwala kasi ako na kapag may mga ganitong tao inside the government na involved sa lawmaking mas napapalayo tayo sa wrath ng Lord na possible na mahiwalay tayo sa na, na, na ma-align pa din tayo sa nais ng Panginoon para sa bansa ito. So, uh, actually, this coming April 28 to 29, di naman promotion, but the CIPAP party list will be having their conference about uh, for the aspiring public leaders. So, yung guest speaker namin, si na Roy Abunda, si City Councilor Alfred Vargas. So, through this conference, maganda na makilahok din tayo sa government. So, ngayon naman pag-usapan natin, how can the church engage with families? So, according to Crystal, meron siyang kaibigan na member ng Yakapa members of the church. So, itong church na to, residing to sa province, I think sa Visayas. And then, uh, every Semana Santa, every Holy Week, nag-iikot-ikot sila like house to house at pinagpipray yung mga pamilya dun sa barangay nila. And also, katulad lang din nung no, nag-house to house din kami dito sa church namin, dito sa barangay namin, dito sa District 4, Quezon City. Like, hindi lang isang barangay kasi yung sakop namin, pati ibang district. So, nag-iikot kami sa iba't ibang parangay, house to house. Pinagpipray namin sila kung may mga pangangailangan sila. And then, maganda din na yung mga pastors, they are also involving sa counseling ng mga pamilya na, na nakakausap nila. Lalo na yung may mga families din kasi na hindi kayang, hindi kayang makapagbayad ng counseling. Siyempre yung mga pastors, meron silang discernment kung what is right and what is wrong. So, pwede nilang i-share yun sa mga families na nakakausap nila. So, that's free counseling. Also, in addition lang, sa church na kasi namin, meron kami tinatawag na Adapt a Family Program. So, itong program na ito ay para sa mga pamilya na kapuspalad, meron isang worker lang sa family. So, uh, meron funds na ginagamit yung church namin para makapamili ng mga groceries. Pero yung funds na yun, most likely, 
uh, out of pocket lang talaga namin mga leaders and workers para makabili ng mga groceries sa mga pamilyang ito nakapuspalan. Kasi dito nga sa Quezon City, may mga families living under the bridge, meron din nasa ilog lang. So, sa mga ibang areas dito sa QC. So, yun yung mga binibigyan namin ng aids, like groceries. Binibigyan namin sila ng groceries right after nilang makapag-kinig ng Word of God every after Sunday service. So, ano na yun? Win-win situation. Meron, na, meron uh, nakapakinig na sila ng Word of God and at the same time, meron silang groceries na mauuwi. So, that's one of our programs. Adapt a family program. How can the church engage with schools naman? So, Ako, personally, I am a product of School Church Outreach Ministry. Katulad ng ginagawa nila Pastor Porces sa Sambuanga, na kung saan they have a Bible study inside the school. So, doon ako nakakilala sa Lord. Produkto ako ng ganun. Maganda na may mga ganun kasi di naman siya during the class. Maganda na right after the class, may ma-invite ka lang ng mga kabataan, tapos mga Bible study kayo. Kahit hindi siya 1 hour, kahit 30 minutes lang. Maganda na right after the class, merong ganito. Uh, so, sa so church namin, ang tawag doon is School Church Outreach Ministry. And then, after the class, meron kami Bible study. So, hindi lang siya purely Bible study, meron din uh, heart-to-heart -heart questions, meron din mga activities, team buildings, mga ano. And also, maganda din na yung church, ini-involve nila yung mga leaders and workers nila, especially yung mga kabataan sa mga brigada skwela. Maganda din na may, meron sila mga feeding programs sa school, hindi lang sa mismong elementary or high school. Maganda din sa mga kindergarten na meron sila mga feeding program. And also, maganda din na yung church is namimigay sila ng mga soul supplies, namimigay sila ng mga aids sa mga students ng church nila. Para sa, sa, sa ganong paraan, mapapakita natin yung care natin sa mga students. How can the church engage with workplaces? So for us to engage more in the workplaces, kagaya ng ginagawa ni Pastor Percy, may mga hawak siya mga companies and restaurants in Sambuanga City na kung saan nagkakandak siya ng mga Bible studies like in Rosie Company, in Rusko Company, sa mga iba't ibang restaurant. Madami siyang hawak ng mga establishment and yung ginagawa niya is to pray for the employees sa mga taong pumupunta doon. In addition to this, sa aming church din, may tinatawag kami na Kingdom Living Ministry na kung saan yung head ng Kingdom Living Ministry namin sa church namin, madami siyang mga kakilala na connections niya. Sa mga, itong Kingdom Living Ministry, it is purely for businesses, for hiring, sa mga taong nangangailangan ng tao, o sa mga tao nangangailangan din ng trabaho. Ganun. So, yung head namin, May mga kakilala siya na pwede niyang i-refer. Halimbawa, ako, nangangailangan ako ng construction. May i-refer siya sa amin. And then, kapag sa mga businesses naman, uh, nag-a-announce nag kami, hindi siya lagi, pero once a month, nag-a-announce yung church namin sa Facebook page namin na may mga flower shop po si sister ganito, may coffee shop po si sister ganito to support their business as well. So, maganda yun. Hindi sila purely leader eh. Pero members lang din sila na church. Pero maganda yun to establish not just relationship as a customer but also relationship as a brother and sisters in Christ. And in addition to all of this, let us hear some ideas as well from a former president of Altar Servers. Let us hear it from Brother Earl John. The church is a dynamic social institution that touches all the aspects of human life, including schools, families, governments, and workplaces. As we can recall, during the arrival of Spanish conquistadores in the country, they introduced 
established a basic education system known to be parochial schools. The presence of Pontifical University in the Philippines, particularly the Pontifical University of Santo Tomas de Aquino, is, this is a strong manifestation that the Church is the one who introduced a formal and basic institution in the country. It is known to be the only pontifical university in the Philippines as well as in the whole of Asia. In families, the Church maintained its stance, its strong and indelible stance against abortion, wherein it advocated for the protection of family, considering it as the most precious aspect of society, wherein human civilization blooms in all its glory. In government, the Church is the one who advocated for a clean, honest, peaceful, and fruitful elections. The presence of PPCRB, the Parish Pastoral Council in particular, during campaign periods are a strong manifestation that the Church is very active in government and in governing the people. Also, we can note that the, the presence of the Church during the Edge of People Power Revolution is the one who made a pivotal role to gather all the people in that particular area to demand for a clean, for a new, and for a revolutionized government that is worthy for all the Filipinos. Lastly, the presence of the Church in workplaces is evident as well. It advocates for, a, for an honest and, of course, the upholding of integrity in work ethics. The Church, in all its glory, is a strong social institution present in all the aspects of the lives of the people, from womb to tomb. Most especially, it advocated for the preservation of human life.